हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ अर्पण मंगल आई हैव सिक्योर्ड ऑल इंडिया रैंक ऑफ 29 नाइन इन गेट ट्वेंटी इन द फर्स्ट अटैम्प एंड नाउ आई एम परसुइंग माई एम टेक फ्रॉम आई आई बैंगलोर सो इन द गेट देर आर फ्यू टॉपिक्स विच आर रिसेंटली एडेड लाइक वाई फाई आई पी वी सिक्स दीज आर द टू टॉपिक्स विच आर एडेड इन गेट गेट ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन ओनली एंड इन गेट ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन वी हैव वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम आई पी ऑन वाई फाई एंड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन वी डेंट हैव एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दीज टू टॉपिक्स तो दे आर हव आर वेरी हाई चांसेस दैट वी गेट क्वेश्चन ऑन दीज टू टॉपिक्स बट द प्रॉब्लम इज ऑन ऑन ऑनलाइन देर इज नो प्रिसाइज कंटेंट ऑन हाउ मच वी हैव टू डू इन ऑन वाई फाई फॉर गेट सो आई थॉट टू प्रिपेयर दिस वीडियो इट विल बी बेनिफिटेड फॉर यू इन इन वन आवर और सो आई कवर ऑल द बेसिक्स ऑफ वाई फाई विच विल बी सफिशियंट फॉर यू टू आंसर एनी गेट क्वेश्चन सो वाई फाई इज नथिंग इट इज इट इज बट इट इज अ मार्केट नेम ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड आई ट्रिपल ई एट ओ टू डॉट वन वन एंड दिस इज वॉट वी हैव टू प्रिपेयर फॉर गेट फाइन so nowadays we are heading to our wireless network so the idea here it is just a lan but without wires so we don't have headache to connect our device so there are long wires coming on so if we don't have wires it become handy we can move around with with our laptops while connected to the internet fine uh, lan without wires in wireless network we usually use unlicensed we use unlicensed frequency of the ism band and low power it is because to provide services in cheap and to provide service to the more people if we use unlicensed frequency they are available free uh, for free in the ism band so it will be cheap to provide wifi services and low power because then we will be able to provide services to more number of people there are various uh, techniques in wireless network 802.11 bluetooth and uwb and so on but for the gate syllabus this is what we have to prepare 802.11 and this is just the and the market name of 802.11 is wifi i triple e 802.11 wifi is a standard which provide a standard of wireless lan which cover two layers physical layer and the data link layer fine so in this standard we have two kinds of services one is bss basic service set and second is ess extended service set okay so what is bss bss is just a unit or a building block so we have multiple stations which can communicate with each other without any wires so this form a basic building block these these peers these have without wires they can communicate with each other fine so these station can be mobile or stationary so this form a basic building block because ha huh, all the station so this station covers the range in this circle so this station can communicate wirelessly in this set so this form a basic building block or bss in this we can have a optional centralized station also which we called as access point it is optional if we have an access point we call this architecture as a infrastructure architecture
and the BSS without access point is called ad hoc architecture. So why do we have access point is if we have a centralized base station it became easy for us to communicate. If we have a centralized authority which can communicate with the station so it make it make us uh, it make easy to communicate. So if we have access point we call it as infrastructure architecture otherwise it is a ad hoc architecture. As it is a wireless network the range of this device in which they can communicate is very less. So the idea is to, to connect various BSS so that each station can communicate with a larger number of stations. So what we do is we have the second type of services which we call as ESS which is extended services. It is nothing but a connection of various BSS. But we will be able to connect these BSS only if we have an access point in that. Fine. So that's why I was saying that if we have an access point, it makes us easy. It makes easier to communicate with a larger number of people. So, so what we do is we have multiple BSS, and all of these BSS have an access point. And there are various stations. Now, a station can be a part of one or two BSS that's not a problem now so this circle this is of one BSS and these nodes can communicate with each other wirelessly but what if this node want to communicate with this node since this node cannot communicate with this node because it is outside its range so what we can do is uh, all these access points are connected to each other with a wired network which we call as distributed system now this distributed system can be any wired land 802.1 doesn't specify the the wired land which we have to use here it can be ethernet also anything which you want to use here so if this node want to communicate with a station which are in this way uh, which are in the range of this node it can communicate them with them directly otherwise if this node want to communicate with the other station which is outside its range it, then it can communicate via access point so if this node want to communicate with this node it will communicate via it will communicate via this route And if this node want to communicate with the node inside this range, it can communicate directly. Now the advantage of having a wired network here is that this wired LAN can be connected to any server or hub or router or anything. So in this way, this node can have access to the whole of the network. Fine. Okay. So the based on the based on the mobility, based on mobility, we have the we have three types of station or node. One is no transition nodes. BSS transition stations and the ESS transition. So if a station has the capability to move inside this BSS, its BSS only, then we call it that station as a no transition station. If a node or a station has capability to move to the other BSS, which are a part of the same ESS, then that station will be called as BSS station. BSS transition station means it can it can move within the BSS which are a part of the single ESS. And if the station has capability 
to move outside the CSS also we call it as a ESS transition station but while station move from one BSS to the other or from one ESS to the other ESS I, uh, A22 dot one one doesn't guarantee that the connection will remain continued during the move so during the move the con the connection can be disconnected but after the move you will be able uh, you will be again connected so this standard specifies two layers physical layer and data link layer in physical layer this standard has various specification so based on the encryption and uh, encryption scheme and coding scheme or the multiplexing scheme, we have various version of 802.11, 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11c and data link uh, layer, we have two parts, medium access control layer and the logic link layer control. In the medium, in the MAC layer, we have two sub layers, DCF, distributed coordination function and the point coordination function. So 802.11 provide two kinds of services, contention free services and the contention based services so contention free services are optional so distributed coordination function basically provide contention based services so this is compulsory but if we want to uh, to have contention free services we can have a pcf running on top of dcf fine so we will learn about the D dcf first and then we move ahead okay so let's consider, let, uh, let's consider a situation, a station enter a network. Now this station can be in the range of various access points. So to which access point this station can associate? So, so this station can associate itself with this access point as well as can this access point. So the process or the technique by which the station associates itself to one of the access point within its reach is called scanning. So whenever a station enter a network, it has to uh, it has to do scanning to associate itself with one with one of the access point. Or suppose this station is initially uh, associate itself with this access point and after some time it became unhappy, uh, unhappy with this access point so then also it can associate itself with the other access point so this process is called scanning by which station associate itself to one of the access point so what is the steps we have to follow to do scanning is first this station will send a proof frame So this station will send a proof frame and all of the access point which are in the range of this station will get this proof frame. Then all the access point which are in the reach of this station will send a probe response frame. All access point. After getting all the probe, res uh, all the probe response frame this station will associate itself with one of the with, with one of the AP. So this station will select one of the uh, AP and it will send association request to that access point. Station will send frame to that AP. So let's say this station send probe frame to all these access point and then all these access point will send probe response frame after getting all the response probe response frame this station will choose one of the access point he want to associate itself with so let's say it choose this access point then this station will send association request frame to this access point and this access point will send association response frame to this station and the connection is built AP will send association response frame so this is called scanning 
बेसिकली दिस इज कॉल्ड एक्टिव स्कैनिंग वाई एक्टिव बिकॉज इन दिस द स्टेशन अप्रोच इज द एक्सेस पॉइंट फर्स्ट एंड देन एक्सेस पॉइंट रिप्लाई बट देर इज अदर काइंड ऑफ स्कैनिंग विच वी कॉल्ड एज पैसिव स्कैनिंग सो टाइम टू टाइम ऑल द एक्सेस पॉइंट विल सेंड अ बीकॉन फ्रेम बीकॉन फ्रेम इट इज एन एडवर्टीजमेंट बाय दिस एक्सेस पॉइंट which tells the capability its capability to each of these station so by that uh, this access point will send a beacon frame which adver advertises its capability to, st to these station and then if this this station want to associate itself with this access point it can send the associate request uh, re request uh, frame to this access point so this type of scanning is called passive scanning now we talk about the first sub layer of mac layer which is dcf distributed coordination function so this is a compulsory service and this dcf provide contention based service what do you mean by contention based service it means multiple station content it content among each other to get access of the channel for that it uses csma ca carrier sensing multiple access collision avoidance not collision detection unlike in wired we use csma cd carrier sensing multiple access collision detection actually collision detection is a better technique because of if we can detect the collision we can do retransmission and other thing but in the wireless network we cannot do collision detection and that's why we have to go with the collision avoidance there are reason in that in wireless network we cannot use collision detection okay so if you remember that in ethernet when we use csma cd how do we detect the collision in that we have a wired lan and the station is connected to this while it is sending the data it is also listening to the channel while sending the data it is also listening to the channel and if and if it listens some other frequency it detects that there is some collision so in order to detect collision my station has to be full duplex that means it is capable of sending and receiving signal at the same time but since as i said that wifi in wifi we want to provide services to the more customer and we want to be uh, it to be cheap as cheap as possible so wifi operates at half duplex in wifi so the station so if we want a station to be full duplex it will be more costly and wifi uh, therefore wifi operates at half duplex so if a station is sending a data on a channel it cannot listen at the same time so it's not possible for a station to detect a collision second reason uh, by which we cannot able to detect collision is that in wifi as you see that this node is in the okay this node range in this bss so the range of this station is this circle only so when when we want to detect collision every station must be aware of other station which is sending the signal but in wifi if a is sending the data and c is sending the data a is unaware that c is sending the data because the strength of the signal when c is sending the data the signal strength is less at a so when a is sending a is sending the data while it reaches to c the signal strength is very low to detect collision so 
C will not be able to know that A is also sending a data. So this is another reason why we can't do collision detection in Wi-Fi. And the third reason is that there are problems like hidden terminal problem. Uh, which we'll discuss later and due to that also we'll not be able to do collision detection in Wi-Fi. So we have to go for collision avoidance. So in DCF we use CSMA C8 carrier sensing multiple access collision avoidance. So what is the process now? We have a source and we have a receiver. or sender or receiver. So since this uh, S Ethernet we have carrier sensing multiple access. So when this sender or this source want to send some data to this receiver it first, ex uh, it first sends the carrier. If the channel is idle then it will send the data. So as we have in the Ethernet in the starting uh, the carrier sensing multiple access technique is the same. We use back of time with a persistence strategy. So initially it, the station will set a back of time to zero and uh, according to its persistence strategy it may be it may be one persistent, non-persistent or anything. According to its persistence strategy it will sense the channel. If the channel is idle, if the channel is idle then this station will wait for some time which we call as DIFS time. DIFS means distributed inter-frame space. Then after waiting for a DIFS of amount of time, it sends a control frame to receiver which we call as RDS, request to send. It, the sender is asking the permission to receiver whether it, it can send the data to this receiver or not. After receiving the RTS signal from sender, uh, this it will wait for ISFS amount of time which we call as short inter-frame space and then it will reply with CTS signal clear to send. That means receiver is saying to the sender that it is ready to receive the data. After getting the CTS signal, the sender again will wait for ISFS amount of time and then it will send a data. After receiving the data, the receiver will wait for ISF amount of time and will send an acknowledgement. So let's look at more detail what we are doing. is First of all, source will sense the carrier whether the, the, whether the carrier is idle or not and for that it uses the same backup algorithm and the persistence strategy. Once it find that the once it find that the channel is idle, it wait for DIFS amount of time. So as you see, after getting the channel idle also, we are waiting for small period of time. DIFS here, SIFS here, SIFS. Why we are waiting for this period of time? Because now we have to do collision avoidance. We have to take care that after sensing the channel also there may be chances for the collision so we are not, we are not straight away sending the data or any signal we are waiting for some period of time and after that we are sending this control signal so you see that for collision avoidance we, we are straight away not sending the data packet first we are, there is a kind of handshaking between the source and the receiver It first requests whether the receiver is ready to take the data packet or not. When they, this kind of handshaking is done, then only the source will send data packet to the receiver. 
so this is another way how we are doing the collision avoidance fine so now you will be able to understand this diagram more clearly in the start the source will run the pack of algorithm and according to its persistence strategy <coughs> it will sense whether the channel is idle or not after sensing the channel is idle it will wait for difs amount of time which is distributed inter frame space after waiting for this period of time it send a request to send signal to the receiver and it start a timer see in this uh, we we how we how do we know whether the uh, rts signal is received by the receiver or not there could be a collision in between for that when it send an rts signal to the receiver it start a timer so if the cts signal is received before time out then if the cts signal is reach uh, is received before time out then only will process afterward otherwise what it will what we will do will increase the if the cts signal is not received before time out we will increase the back of time algorithm uh, back of time and if we again wait for that back of time and the process again start if the cts signal is received before time out it means that the receiver is ready to take the data frame then also after receiving the cts signal we are waiting for isfs amount of time again for collision avoidance after waiting for isfs amount of time we'll send a data frame and now again because of the collision we start a timer so if we get an acknowledgement before time out then it's a success and the packet is received if we don't get the acknowledgement before time out again we'll do what we'll do we'll increase the back of time and the process will start again in the meantime if we reach uh, after increasing the back of time if the limit is reached we can't do anything and we have to abort the process so this is the whole picture why uh, to coll for collision avoidance we are waiting for short period of time and we are sending uh, we are doing a handshaking between the sender and receiver before sending the data packet apart from collision avoidance waiting for this period of time is important because as i said in the wifi in wifi station are station are half duplex so it may need to change its state from sending state to the receiving state so for that some amount of time is needed so for that also we uh, before sending up data packet or before listening we wait for some period of time and these these timings are important for priority suppose two station there are two station which sends the channel at the same time so they both will find the channel idle so if the packet which have to so we can give priority to the station fine so see this is one sender and this is one receiver it may be uh, maybe this sender is not sending to this receiver so this is one sender and this is one receiver this receiver has to send acknowledgement packet or cts signal and this sender has to send rts or data packet or so if they both station send the channel at the same time they both find they both will find it idle then this station because ha huh, this station suppose it want to send, it want to send rts signal it will wait for difs amount of time and since this receiver want to send an acknowledgement or cts it will wait for isfs amount of time so now if we want that if both if these two stations sends the channel at the same time and we want that this receiver should send the packet first because it is sending an acknowledgement or the clear to send signal so we want to give priority to priority to the acknowledgement packet so what we can do we can make difs bigger than sifs which is generally the case so difs is bigger than sifs so if sender or another receiver is accessing the channel at the same uh, is sensing the channel at the same time because it will wait for more more amount of time receiver will succeed and it will send the acknowledgement packet first before sender can send the rts packet 
fine so these intervals are very important to give the priority to the packets for avoiding the collision and to switch between the receiving state and the sending state for collision avoidance we also want when this station is sending some data to this station we want that other station should not send data in between to avoid collision so when this station is sending some data to this station how do other station know that they uh, they don't have to send any data so for that when for that also this handshaking helps when this station send rts packet to this station the all the station which are in the range of this source will hear this rts packet and th in this rts packet we have a field called duration field in which it is given the time amount for which this these two station want to occupy the channel so when so when the other station which are in the range of this source read this rts signal they know that the uh, this amount of time the channel is going to occupy so they start a vector called nav network allocation vector so whenever the other station here rts or cts and in in these packets there is a field called duration field in which the amount of time this transmission is going to take place the time is there so when the other station hear this rts packet it start its nav time this is a timer or we call it as a network allocation vector so for this period of time other station they are not going to even sense the channel they will sit idle to avoid collision so we can add one more thing here that before sensing the channel before sensing the channel the station check its nav timer if nav timer is expired then only it sends the channel otherwise it wait for its nav to get expired this is also meant for collision avoidance so in wifi we have two problems one is called hidden terminal problem and the other is called exposed station problem so what is hidden terminal problem let's say there are three station b a and c the range of p is this circle and the range of c is this circle fine so let's consider a case when b want to send some data to a and c want to send some data to a Be B want to transmit some data to A, and C also want to transmit some data to A. But B and C are hidden from each other; they don't know about each other. So when B is transmitting some data to A, C don't know that A is uh, receiving some data from B. So it uh, so they both can start sending data at the same time, and there will be a collision. so this is called hidden terminal problem because b and c are unaware of each other they can they can both send data at the same time which will lead to collision fine so how does uh, this handshaking lamp this handshaking signals help in avoiding this problem is suppose b and c sends the channel at the same time fine and they both will find it idle so b so b will first send rts signal to a and c also send rts signal to a fine after after listening to the rts signal from both the side a decide whichever data he want the packet first 
so he will send the suppose this is called rts b and this is rts c it will send cts signal to b so these two station since they want to communicate with a they first send an rts signal to a and a will decide that uh, which which request it it's it want to accept and it it send an cts signal for that but when a send a cts signal c is also in the range suppose a want to send cts signal to b but since c can also listen to the cat uh, c can also listen to the cts signal when a send a cts signal to b c can also listen to that signal so c know that there there may be some hidden node which want to communicate with a so it will stop sending the data so this hidden terminal problem can be solved by rts and cts signals okay so the second problem we have is exposed station problem this is a re uh, reverse of the previous problem in this problem station is not able to send data even when channel is idle so let's consider one example this is one receiver this is one sender this is another sender and this is another receiver okay so let's consider its case these are four station the range of this station is from this station to this station the range of s1 is from this to this range from s2 is this and likewise now currently s1 is transmitting data to r1 and now s2 want to transmit some data to r2 but but ha huh, since s2 is in the range of s1 when s1 is sending data to r1 s2 assume that it cannot send the data to r2 because someone in its range is sending some data but if you see there is no problem s2 can send data to r2 because the channel is there is no interference s2 can easily send data to r2 it will not interfere with the transition over here but at will s2 will not send because it is hearing the transmission by s1 because s2 is in the range of s1 s2 is in the range of s1 so when s1 is transmitting data to r1 s2 is listening to that so it assume that it cannot send data to any station but it's not the case s2 can easily send data to r2 because there is no interference so this is called exposed station problem because of this transition this station is exposed to the entire network it is not able to transmit data to r2 so how to deal with this problem so the rts and cts signal which i told you about briefly uh, can solve this problem partial only partially so when s1 want to communicate with r1 it first send an rts signal to r1 s1 first send an rts signal to r1 and since s2 is in the range of s1 s2 will also listen to that rts fine but when r1 reply to s1 with a cts signal then s2 will not listen to its cts because s2 is not in the range of r1 so for this transmission s2 will receive the rts signal but it will not receive the cts signal so by this s2 can s2 can detect that this is a exposed station problem so it can send data to r2 there is no problem it can send data to r2 
So RTS and CTS signal can solve this problem. So with the help of RTS and CTS signal, S2 can detect the exposed station problem. Means that S2 can detect that S1 is communicating with a node which is not interfering the node it he want to communicate with. So what it will do? It will send an RTS signal to R2. But if S1 and S2 are not synchronized, if S1 and S2 are not synchronized, what do you mean by synchronized? Means if their data rate are different or their packet size are different. So if S1 and S2 are not synchronized, then when S2 send an RTS signal to R2 and R2 send a CTS signal to S2, this CTS signal will not be able to listen, uh, S2 will not be able to listen this CTS signal if S1 and S2 are not synchronized because this CTS signal will be collide and if their data rate are different and packet size are different, then S2 will not be able to listen this CTS signal and hence S2 will not be able to communicate with R2. So this is this problem is called exposed station problem means even if the channel is idle S2 is not able to communicate with R2. Okay until now we talk about DSF sublayer of MAC layer which provide contention based services and it is compulsory to provide. But there are some circumstances in which I want to give priority to, priority to some station to get access to the channel. Suppose I am running only DCF protocol. So in that all of these stations are running CSMA CA protocol. So any of these station can get access to the channel. But what if this station want to send some time sensitive frames means uh, it is important to get uh, to get ch channel by this station first. But if I am I am running only DCF there is no mean that I'm, I can guarantee that this station will get the channel. Any of these station which are competing with, uh, with it can get access to the channel. So for this, this kind of scenario, when I want to give priority to, to some station to get access of the channel, what we do is centralized base station which is access point, it runs PCF, PCF uh, protocol which provides contention free services. So this access point will poll among the station to which it want to give contention free services. Means it will poll this, this station if if access point want that this station should deliver its packet first without any contention, it will poll this station and it will tell other station to keep quiet till that period of time. So they will remain idle and only in that period only this station will send the frame. So how access point run this algorithm is the same way. So it will first sense the carrier. If the channel is idle, it will send, it will wait for PIFS amount of time. What is PIFS? PCF inter frame space. It will wait for that period of time. After that, it will send a beacon frame. In the beacon frame, there is an information that access point want to pull this station to provide contention free services. So when access point send the beacon frame in the whole BSS, the station which is pulled, it will be quiet, but the other station will start their NAV vector, NAV timer, which is network allocation vector. What that does mean? Well, until the NAV vector, uh, NAV timer is there, all these station will not even sense the channel. They will remain idle. In that way, this pole station will get chance to deliver its frame without any contention. So when these other, sta these other station listen to the beacon frame, they will start their NAV vector. After beacon frame, the AP will wait for SIFS amount of time, short inter frame space. After that, it will send a pole frame to make ready the pole station to send its frame. After receiving the pole, pole, frame, pole frame by access point, this pole station will wait for, again wait for IS, uh, SIFS amount of time, short inter frame space time. And after that, it will send an acknowledgement 
that it can, it has successfully received the pole frame pole frame and it will send the data without any contention after receiving the data after receiving the data so this station will send data to the access point and which will be delivered to this wired lan to the whole network after receiving the packet from this pole station the ap will wait for is uh, sifs amount of time and it will send an acknowledgement after this transmission is over it has to inform other station that the contention free services it want to provide it's over so access point will send a contention free frame to all the station and when uh, these other station will receive the contention free uh, contention free frame from the access point they will uh, they will end their nav vector and again the contention based services will start so this is uh, that's why we use point coordination function just i said that we want to give priority to acknowledgement packet more than the data packet for that what we did is that sifs timer is less than difs timer when a station want to send a data packet it has to wait for difs amount of time and when a station has to send acknowledgement packet it has to wait for sifs amount of time if sifs amount of time is less than difs amount of time so if it happens that these both the station access the channel or sends the channel at the same time acknowledgement uh, ack the station which uh, which is sending acknowledgement packet will get the channel first because sifs is le less than difs and it will send the packet first so in this way we are giving priority to the acknowledgement packet more than the data packet in the same way what if access point want to start the contention free services and at the same time this station is also trying to send the packet so access point and this other station sends the channel at the same time and they both find channel idle but after sensing the channel ap will wait for pifs amount of time and these other station will wait for difs amount of time if i want to give priority to the access point so that the contention free services will start earlier pifs has to be smaller than difs if in the uh, okay so if other this other other station and access point even if they sense the channel at the same time access point will get access to the channel first because pifs is smaller than difs in this way we time uh, we select uh, we uh, choose the timing of these this is space uh, sifs difn and pifs okay so this is all about the two sub layer of mac in the wifi in wifi fragmentation is also allowed since the channel is noisy if my data packets are very long it is uh, then if the, it is it got corrupted i have to re retransmit the whole big packet so it is better if i send the small packet so in wifi the fragmentation is allowed so we now talk about the frame format all these things which we are going to learn now you need not to mug up just get the brief idea and if the game question came on this you will be able to do fine so in the frame format these are the particular fields two bytes are given for frame control then we have a d means duration then we have address 1 address 2 address 3 sequence control which is the sequence number address 4 frame body and the fcs which is the checksum so in the frame control which are of two byte there are various sub fields the first field is protocol version then we have type so in I in wifi we have various type of frame for example we have management frame so if you remember in the starting i told you about that if the station enter in the network it have to associate itself with a access point for that it send the pro frame associate request frame request frame pro frame associate request frame all these are management frame 
next type of frame which we have a control frame which are rts cts acknowledgement frame all these are control frame and then we have data frame so in frame control we have protocol version then we have we have to specify which type of frame is this then in the particular type also we have various subtype so for example if the type is control frame it could be an rts frame cts frame or acknowledgement so we have to specify its subtype then we have these two particular bits which means 2ds and from ds ds means distributed system distributed system is nothing but the wired lan which we have in our ess so these two bit decide what are these four address going to be there in the body of this frame fine okay so i will define it then define them later so after frame control we have duration field which is of 2 byte so in case of rts signal rts packet or cts packet we have to specify the duration of time we want to occupy the channel so for that we have the duration field we specify the the time interval we want to occupy the channel in this field based on these two field we have these four addresses then for synchronization we have sequence number and for error detection we have checksum okay so these two bit decide what are these four address going to be there so if the bit these two bit are 0 0 what do you mean by 0 0 if 2 ds bit is 0 means a packet is not going to distributed system so actually the complete picture is there so these are the station and this is the ess fine so it could be the case that this station want to communicate with this station so when this station want to communicate with this station it can communicate it directly because it is in the range of its bss fine so it the uh, the frame need not to go to the distributed system so in this case both this bit going to be zero it means the packet or the frame is not going to distributed system and is not coming from distributed system fine so based on that we have the these four status so these are the four addresses in address 1 we place the address of the next destination so uh, in data link layer the packet go hop by hop so we in address 1 Uh, in address one field we specify the address of the next destination or the next hop in address two we specify the address of previous hop or the previous destination in address three we provide the final destination address and in address four we have original source address so in the first case when the packet is not going to distributed system and not coming from distributed system means the packet is communicating with the sta station directly this case in this case what is the address one means the address of next destination it is the final destination it want to communicate so in the address one we have the destination address in address two we have to write previous destination address which is the source itself in address three in this case we mention the bss id so if this station is communicating with this so it is in the this circle bss so we have to specify the bss id in this case and there is no need to specify the original source because destination address 2 is specifying the original source so in this particular case address 4 this null in the second case we have 2 ds bit 0 and from ds bit 1 means the packet or the frame is not going to distributed system but it is coming from distributed system so uh, so this is the case so this is a distributed system so the packet is coming from distributed system to this station so the packet is coming or the frame is coming from access point to this to this station so in address 1 we place the destination in address 2 we will provide the sending api address sending api address address 3 we provide the source address and the address 4 is null here the third case is the packet or the frame is going to distributed system but it is not coming from distributed system means it is this case the the frame is going from station to this access point fine so in address 1 we will place the receiving access point address in address 2 we will place the source address 
in address 3 we will place the destination address and address 4 will be null here and the final case is the packet or the frame is going to distributed system and it is coming from distributed system so this is basically this case in the LAN the packet or the frame is going from one access point to the other access point so in this case the address 1 will have the receiving access point address address 2 will have sending access point address address 3 will have destination address and address 4 will have the original source address so this is what to so these two bits decide what are these four addresses we are going to have and SC will be the sequence number and body will range from 0 to 2312 byte and there will be standard CRC32 checksum of the 4 byte so this is what we uh, have to do about the frame format please don't mug up this frame uh, these fields and all these bytes etc you just need to get the field key there are some types subtypes there are two ds bit from ds bit and the address are placed accordingly you need to know that part only okay now we talk about the physical layer i don't think actually this part is not important for gate perspective, gate perspective. so i will just give the very brief idea to just give you an idea okay so in physical layer in IEEE 802.1 we have various specification according to the multiplexing scheme we are using and coding scheme we are using and the security standard we are using we have various specification of 802.11 so we have 802.11a in which the bandwidth we are, which we are using is 5.725 gigahertz we are using orthogonal frequency division multiplexing as a wireless encoding scheme we are using phase shift key as a modulation scheme the speed varies is from 6 to 54 megabit per second and the range is 25 to 75 feet in 802.11b specification the bandwidth is 2.4 gigahertz and the wireless encoding scheme is, scheme is DSSS uh, the modulation scheme is phase shift key the speed range from 5.5 to 11 mbps and the range is from 100 to 200 feet in the 802.11g specification the bandwidth is 2.4 gigahertz and the speed is 54 mbps and the encoding scheme which we are using is OFDM the important part here is just that we are using unlicensed band in IISM uh, so I told why we are using unlicensed band so that uh, it is available free of cost to provide cheaper services cheaper so in physical layer we are using this uh, encoding scheme FHSS frequency hopping spread spectrum and it is used in original WLAN standard uh, 802.11 uh, we have also D triple S direct sequence spread, uh, spread spectrum which is used as an encoding scheme in 802.11b we have OFDM orthogonal frequency division multiplexing which is used as an encoding scheme in 802.11g uh, in the wireless network security is main concern because we are using unlicensed band so it is open to all so your data is not secure so you have to go for security uh, it's a main concern here so in WLAN security standard we have WEP which is wired equivalent privacy protocol and it is used as a security pro originally it is used as security protocol in 802.11b and it uses RC4 as an encryption algorithm we have Wi-Fi protected access and uh, WPA it is a temporal uh, key integrity protocol and encryption uh, the main idea here is that encryption uh, encryption algorithm changes the key dynamically for each data transmission so the key will be changing uh, dynamically for each data transmission this is the idea we have here and the encryption algorithm is same rc4 we have the second version of wpa wpa2 in which we use instead of rc4 encryption algorithm we use advanced encryption uh, encryption standard aes which is stronger than rc4 so this is what about the physical physical layer uh, it was just to give you a brief idea uh, according to me it's not uh, as important for there are matlab, very less chances to get a question from here in, in gate so uh, almost I have covered every basic concept of Wi-Fi which is important for gate so I will uh, advise you not to mug up all the ideas uh, all the frame format physical layer standard you need not mug up every, uh, everything just look at this video twice or thrice and you are prepared for gate i think you will be able to answer each and every question of gate from this topic thank you